grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us bow in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Alleluia. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come. Let us adore him. Oh.
the book of Matthew. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily day, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard. When he came day, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those players about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the sport of the But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Do you not agree with me for the usual daily way? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. that we have a bit of an actual congregation assembled here with us. And it's a start, and I thank you for joining me. And for all who have helped to imagine and create and plan and think about how we might resume doing in-person worship here safely at Old North, and in particular to Tim who's out there guarding the gate <laughs> and welcoming in all of you. I'm sure I'm not alone in feeling like we're all in a little bit of a time warp. I mean, in some ways, as Jen walked up the street this morning and I saw her out in front of the other gate, it felt like I had just said good morning to her last yes. Sunday. But of course, it has been a very long time since we've been here in person. The calendar up in my office in the Paris house is still set to March because I haven't spent much time in there and haven't bothered to peel off the other months. 
And when we last gathered here in person, it was only the second week of Lent. Back then, my kids were still in school full time. And in fact, Emily will remember just a few days before we canceled our indoor services indefinitely, I chaperoned her field trip to the Harvard Museum of Natural History. There were fourth graders everywhere. None of us were wearing masks. We sat on the floor to eat our lunch. They were on a crowded school bus to get there. And then the very next day would become their last day in person in school until this week. There was so much we did not know about what lay before us. And I went back and looked it up, and in my last sermon preached here with people with me on March 8th, I had the audacity to preach. It's good to be reminded of good news, especially in a week when it seems all we hear is bad news. Little did we know how bad the news would be fun. And that it would be so many long months before we would even conceive of gathering again in person for worship. And even now, of course, that we are here, we're outside on this rather chilly morning wearing masks, sitting far apart from each other, and only a handful of you in attendance. But still, it's a start. And it is very good to be here with you. So I suppose it's fitting that this first Sunday back, our two lessons this morning highlight grumbling of God's people. Our first lesson speaks quite well to this moment that we're in right now. We're continuing to read of the great Exodus story. And on previous Sundays, we heard about Moses' divine encounter with God in the burning bush, the preparations required for the night of the Passover. And last week, we were reminded of the miraculous crossing of the Red Sea as Moses led the people of Israel to safety and freedom from their Egyptian captors. We'll fast forward a bit, and Moses and the Israelites are in the wilderness. They're no longer enslaved. They're on their way to the Promised Land but it is taking a very long time to get there. In fact, we know that they will spend 40 years wandering in the wilderness before they arrive in the land of milk and honey. And the Israelites are tired, they're hungry, and they complain against Moses and Aaron. And as often happens, their current challenges make them forget the hardships they left behind. If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Even though they are on their way to something better, they cannot see the future clearly. And they look back longingly to the food that once was plentiful, overlooking the fact that back then, they were enslaved. We too are in a moment when it is hard to see the future clearly. And we miss the world we have left behind. Life was not always easy then, of course. But compared to what we face now, it's understandable that we grieve for our pre-COVID lives. And although it has been far fewer than 40 years so far, and God help us, it doesn't take 40 years to get there, it feels like we have been in this wilderness time long enough already. So let us pray that God does for us what God did for the Israelites what God always does for God's people, providing what is needed to endure through the tough times. In those days of wilderness hunger, God provided food, quails in the evening and manna in the morning, enough to sustain them on their journey. It did not shorten the years they would travel, it did not satisfy them as much as other food might. It wasn't even familiar to them at first. 
Manna was a blessing in their midst that they did not recognize initially. But it was enough to see them through the tough times. And although we have become accustomed to always wanting more, sometimes enough is just what we need. That same theme echoes through our second lesson as well. Remember this parable? A landowner hires some laborers for his vineyard early in the morning and contracts with them for the usual daily wage. And they're satisfied with the terms and they put in a full day's work. But at the end of the day, when they are paid the agreed upon amount, they become angry and grumble because other laborers who worked far fewer hours are given the same wage as they are. The scripture acknowledges they thought they would receive more, even though they were paid exactly what they had been promised. Jesus shares this parable as an illustration of what the kingdom of heaven is like. This is no prosperity gospel. God's kingdom is one of abundance, yes, but not necessarily one of individual abundance. Rather, as scripture scholar Amy Jill Levine argues, the point is not that those who have get more, but that those who have not get enough. Jesus' message is that one does the work in the labor force in the kingdom of God, not for more reward, but for the benefit of all. Again, God promises enough to endure. Not necessarily all that we might want, but certainly enough that we will need. That is the hope and the promise of the gospel and has been the message of God's commitment to God's people since God first established a covenant with the people of Israel so long ago. And yet, as in those days, so too in ours, people complain and grumble. They're envious of God's generosity towards others, failing as we do to delight that God provides enough for everyone. We may get what we are owed yet we always want more. And even though God ensures there will be enough to get through the tough times, we soon tire of the manna and want something more, something new, something better. Scripture describes us as grumbling and envious. We are never satisfied, even if we surmise others are being treated better than we are. This weekend, our Jewish brothers and sisters are celebrating Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year. And on Friday night, I read a post online by a woman named Margot Bloomstein, who was reflecting on both the meaning of the Jewish holiday and the death of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg that same night. And she writes, Judaism teaches the concept of tikkun olam, which means the world is a broken place, and we all bear responsibility to heal it. Just because you cannot do everything does not mean you are freed from the obligation of trying. The welfare of others, our responsibility. The well-being of the environment are responsibility. Equitable policies and laws that ensure justice for others are responsibility. This Jewish teaching reminds me of our baptismal covenant, which we Episcopal Christians renew at every baptism as we strive to commit for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being. If we are not satisfied with the world as it is, we are called to do something about it. If there is not enough generosity, rather than be envious, 
we might share more. Six months ago, as I preached my last in-person sermon before you, it felt like a bad news week and scriptures provided some hope. Particularly the psalm for that day, which was Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. It is he who shall keep you safe. Now, after so many months of really bad news, including that of this weekend, I close with a prayer by theologian and civil rights leader Howard Thurman called Our Little Lives. His words speak to comfort. His words speak to comfort to me, and I pray that they do for you as well. And they're imbued with the message of our scriptures that God will provide what we need, even as we fear it will not be enough. Thurman writes, Our little lives are big problems. These we place upon thy altar. Brood over our spirits, our Father. Blow upon whatever dream thou hast for us that there may glow once again upon our hearts the light from thy altar. Pour out upon us whatever our spirit needs of shock, of lift, of release, that we might may find strength for these days, courage and hope for tomorrow. In confidence we rest in thy sustaining grace, which makes possible triumph in defeat, gain in loss, and love in hate. We rejoice this day to say our little lives, our big problems, these we place upon thy altar. Amen. I invite you to join me in the words of the Apostles' Creed. You may stand or sit as is comfortable for you. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. 
give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Grant us, Lord, not to be anxious about earthly things, but to love things heavenly. And even now, while we are placed among things that are passing away, to hold fast to those that shall endure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified. Receive our, our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen.
and concerns of this congregation, remembering especially those who have asked for our prayer. Jean, Ryan, Betsy, Eric, Michael, Chris, Catherine, Christina, Holmes, Laura, Gina, Ida, Carolyn, Sharon, Diane, Anne, Gail, Jessna, Stella, Tommy, and Patricia. And we pray for the community damaged by the recent storms in the south and the fires in the west, and for those who have lost their lives. We pray for all those affected by the COVID pandemic, for those who are sick, those who have died, and those who face economic hardship, for health care and other essential workers and first responders. We give thanks for the call of the Reverend Dr. Matthew Franco to become vicar in charge here at the Old North Church. May God's blessing be upon him and upon us as we anticipate with joy his arrival in November, and we give thanks for the ministry of the Reverend Eleanor Terry, and we wish her luck in her next congregation. We remember all who have died, especially Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg and Ralph Dan. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. O oh God, you have bound us together in a common life. Help us in the midst of our struggles for justice and truth, to confront one another without hatred or bitterness, and to work together with mutual forbearance and respect through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our su common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.